Hi everyone, Wednesday the 13th of May. Um, welcome to uh, our lunchtime reflection. We're going to begin with um, prayer at home, which has become part of the, the rhythm of life these days. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people, we've gathered in God's presence, separated by distance, but united in God's love. And so we pray, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And like Jesus, we examine ourselves and confess our sins. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the words of God's forgiveness. May the Father forgive us by the death of the Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Our reading uh, continues to be from Luke's Gospel, so it's chapter 5. Um, and it goes as follows. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, can you make me clean? Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. <coughs> then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. And yet the news about him spread all the more, so that the crowds of people came to hear him to, and to be healed of their sickness. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places, and he prayed. One day Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there, they come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and from Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralysed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. And when they couldn't find a way to do that because of the crowd, they went up onto the roof and lowered him on a mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive his sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, not to say, Get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And so he said to the paralysed man, I tell you, take up your mat and go home. And immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he'd been lying on and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we've seen a remarkable thing today. Two stories of Jesus, of Jesus healing people. In the first story, the man with the infectious disease can come straight to Jesus and he begs Jesus to heal him. Because of the disease, the man has been starved of human contact for goodness knows how long. And Jesus heals him by touching him. And he sends the man off to get a certificate to prove He's no longer infectious. 
Then in the, the second story, we hear a group of people bringing a paralysed man on a mat. And such a crowd is gathered that they can't get to Jesus. And they come up with an ingenious solution. They haul their friend up onto the roof and they break through and lower him on the mat down to Jesus. And Jesus heals him. And he gets up and he walks home. Even then, despite witnessing what's happened, there are plenty ready to criticise Jesus. They're entirely focused on bringing Jesus down. They've got no regard for the fact that the man has been healed. In both of these stories, Jesus acts out of loving kindness. He refuses to be bound by what people will think or he should or shouldn't be doing. He sees pain and suffering and he acts. He acts because, well, it is the humane thing to do, the loving thing to do. And he acts because he can. In these last couple of months, we've become entirely focused on the impact the virus is having on our country and on people we know. And we're all enormously thankful for the, the life-saving work and compassion of the NHS staff and care workers. People who have to touch the sick. We understand the risks that they're taking and their courage in just doing their job. They're the ones who are living in the eye of the storm day after day. We understand the pain of relatives who've not been able to touch family members who've had the virus. Especially those who haven't made it. In the second of the two stories, we acknowledge the guts of those who bring the paralysed man to Jesus. It must have taken a bit of doing to get that mat up onto the roof. Goodness knows how far they had travelled. And how on earth do you find a way to lower a mat down through a roof? Presumably, even as they were doing it, they were fearful that they were going to injure the man even more. And they do all this, really not knowing if Jesus will be able to heal him. They just have faith. Enough faith. This Christian Aid Week is different. It's so much harder than usual to catch people's attention about the plight of people elsewhere in the world because we all needed to look inwards. It's so much harder than usual to get information about what's happening in some parts of the world because, well, people aren't travelling, are they? But there are estimates that people who will die of the virus in Africa may well exceed the numbers in Western Europe. Third world economies just don't have the resilience for a time like this. When a global pandemic meets an entrenched global poverty, we've got a perfect storm. Christian Aid goes on helping people who are in need. And when we're talking about helping people in need, we're talking of people who are already lacking the most basic of facilities, who already have underlying health issues, who may have no home, no country even to call their own, and people for whom social distancing, distancing is just, well, an impossibility. Right now there are people in Africa and Asia and Latin America and the Caribbean just heavily reliant on the support of friends. A bit like in the story, they need others to help carry them for a while, offering more than a forlorn hope. It's absolutely right we support those who are nearest and dearest to us. But as Christians we never forget Christ's command love our neighbour as ourself, wherever that neighbour may be in the world. All those who are paralysed by a poverty, not of their own making, but of an accident of birth, they just need our help. 
But this isn't just about responding generously, giving because we can to those who happen to be less fortunate than ourselves. It's also about recognising that you and I are diminished and wounded because the world is arranged as it is. We all need to be part of the transformation. You and I can be some of those friends who act to support those who are already paralysed by poverty and now have a con to, commend, to contend with the virus as well. We might not be able to do that physically, but we can lift them to God in prayer and we can give. You can all still go onto the Christian Aid's website, the section marked Give, or we can phone 020-7523-2269 and donate. It's an act of loving kindness to do that. Let's pray. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Love never fails. Even in the darkest moments, love gives hope. Love compels us to fight against coronavirus alongside our sisters and brothers living in poverty. Love compels us to stand together in prayer with our neighbours near and far. Love compels us to give and act as one. There's somebody at the door. <laughs> Keep talking. to do. Are we on mine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry, that got very, very confusing. Let's, let's just pray that last prayer together. <laughs> love never fails. Even in the darkest moments, love gives hope. Love compels us to fight against coronavirus alongside our sisters and brothers living in poverty. Love compels us to stand together in prayer with our neighbours near and far. Love compels us to give and act as one. Now it's clear that our futures are bound together more tightly than ever before. As we pray in our individual homes around the nation and around the world, we are united as one family. Let's pause, find a moment of peace, and lift our hearts together in prayer. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. They are crew together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. We gather all our prayers as Jesus uh, commands us to do. Our Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will, will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily, daily bread. bread. Forgive us our, our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Faithful God, may we who have shared in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever, Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.